with COVID, the lockdowns, can't do anything, can't go anywhere, can't go see a movie because there are no movies. People have been crushed all over this country because the government has said, sorry, you can't go to work. For now, almost a year, people have been told you can't do what you've always done. Go to work. Small businesses have been crushed. Individuals have been crushed. Big businesses seem to be doing fine. Amazon, record year. Google, Facebook, high tech. Giant corporations, if they were struggling at all, they got a bailout. Now you got a cute little bit of dough. If you were a small business, you got that first loan, if you could get it. How long did that last? Well, you can always get unemployment. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, that helps. I owned a small business. I was doing well, and now I could get unemployment? Oh, gee, that's swell. Big business and the United States government in collusion with each other have been crushing the little guy. (laughs) But remember, it's the Republicans that are with big business. How is this happening? We used to be a country that used to love the underdog. And wasn't it the underdog that had the little rocket ship emojis a few weeks ago? On Reddit, weren't those the underdogs? Those were the people that they're now saying they took their stimulus check. How dare them? They took their stimulus check and they were buying GameStop. How dare them do that? You didn't say anything when they were buying drugs or alcohol with their stimulus check. You don't give a flying crap about that. Here's people that can't, they, they, what are you going to do? You can't go outside. If you're, if you're in California, you can't go out and play golf with your friends. You can't get together with your friends. You can't go to the movie. You can't go to the bar. What are you going to do with the money that you used to spend on entertainment? Well, some people are spending it now. Online, through Robinhood, which you don't have to pay for the trade, and that's their entertainment. Some people are trying to make money. Oh, yes, I know, but the government needs to step in because they might lose. Oh, gee, thank you. Yes, and they might actually win, too. And they were winning. And they weren't doing anything illegal. I'm not saying I'm a fan of it. Although, I'm not saying I'm a fan of it, but it wasn't illegal. There was nothing wrong with it. They were open. They weren't betting on this stock because somebody was telling them, you're going to, this is the greatest company in the world. There's nothing but upside here. They all said, that's probably about right, but let's just save this company. Because to the people on Reddit, GameStop was a, It was a part of their life, you know, in the days when malls were around. And they would go into GameStop and they would get their games. And now that time has passed, but GameStop is still in there fighting. I've been in a GameStop in the last two years. I have a nine-year-old. I go ten times a week. Correct. I mean, it's still in the game. But the hedge funds thought it was over. And so they betted against GameStop. You could do that. That's fair. Fine. But once they started following each other, there wasn't enough downside to buy, so they just kept buying anyway. They bought 40% more than there was stock. How does that work? You better hope it goes down because if it starts to go up, you can never sell. There's a great story in The Federalist about this and about how this works. It's as if it's as if you say, I'm I'm going to buy 10 cars. And uh, I'm going to buy 10. 
because I, I just I just know there's not going to be cars around, so I won't ever have to do I won't ever have to do anything about it. Well, if only one car is around, well, you get all the you get all the money in between. But if somebody says, "I want my ten cars," uh, and you only have four, well, you have to then take the person who you just gave the four cars to and buy those four back and then give them to him again and you still have two cars so now you have to buy two more cars from the guy it's the original four but i gotta make you whole i promise 10 cars well buy them back from me and then give me the cash and then buy two more from me and give me the cash and we'll call it 10. That's what happened to all the Wall Streeters. Now, all the people in Washington are saying, oh, well, we were just helping the little guy because they could, they could lose their shirt. Were you now? Because they were doing fine. It was the hedge funds, you know, the ones that are all really well connected. They were losing their shirt. But in America today, I guess, as George Bush said, we have to violate the free market to save the free market. We no longer have a free market. When you can buy GameStop on the Mexican stock exchange, but not the American stock exchange, that should tell you something. You see, this happened, this happened Thursday and Friday. Do you know why? Because at the end of the month, everybody's got a belly up to the bar. At the end of the month, you, you, don't, you can't ride on the house money anymore. At the end of the month, which the last trading day of the month was Friday, all these hedge funds had to come up and say, okay, okay here, here's the money. They couldn't let it ride out. It was the end of the month. So whatever that stock was at, at the close, they had to pony up and pay all that money. That's why all these hedge funds were loaning money to each other. And a lot of money. Should the stock market do something about this. You know, Elizabeth Warren is calling uh, for an investigation. Now, you would think Elizabeth Warren would be on the side of... uh, Stu, anybody? Elizabeth Warren, she's on the side of... Mm. Her Native American heritage? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) The little guy, right? Oh, I mean the little guy, right. No, she calls the little guy a flash mob with money. A flash mob with Mm. money engaged in internet trading schemes, market manipulation. I can't believe they don't love this story, right? Like you're just taking down very wealthy people. Uh, You'd think they'd love it, but you know, look, they they, what they want in the long term is more control. So the saying they think this is a great system where people can go do these things even if they're small. Uh, that doesn't help them grab more control. No, it allows them to say this market, that we shouldn't have a stock market like this. We should not have a stock market like this. This stock market is, is making people poor. This stock market is, and then it gives them full control of the stock market. This is actually playing in to their hands. And if it was the little guy being raped, they would be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. At least some of them would be. By the way, uh, Hollywood is already cashing in on this. They've already opted for a script. How did you write it last week? This is, we need to tell the story, though, in full, in its full detail. Uh, last week, Ben Mesrick is like one of my favorite writers, my he favorite did authors. The, um... He did The Social Network most famously, right? Um, which was the Facebook story that, that, that turned into a movie. Right. Also the movie 21 about the... Uh, MIT uh, guys that like yeah, scam yeah, yeah, yeah. figured yeah. out a way to beat right, Jack right. Blackjack. 
this is his beat, man. Like he he wrote a book called Ugly Americans, which was about how like how a bunch of traders went over and like raided the Asian markets and figured out a way. Like he he writes this story so well. He's the guy to do this. So last week I tweeted, I was like, I want to be the first to formally request a Ben Mesrick book on the GameStop saga. Mm. He, he liked the tweet. Two days later, <laughs> he is now not. He hasn't even sold the book yet. But he's already sold the, the movie, movie right. from the book that he will be writing, and he will write this book better than anybody. I mean, he, this is the guy to write this thing. So, will they be the? Will it be? Will the people be the enemy? I, mm. I don't think so. I think he's gonna like these guys. <laughs> That's I mean, great. He's really good at telling the story of of it. He did another story um, called I think it was called Straight Flush. The book was about these college guys that that built a giant online poker empire mm-hmm, mm-hmm. during the kind of the poker f- phenomenon from you know a decade ago or so and you know he covers them in their full nuance they i mean they, you know sometimes they're really good characters sometimes they did a lot of shady things and he goes through all of that uh but i i think he'll cover i i will be surprised if there's anything other than covering it fairly he's not going to be on this like i'm cheering on the hedge funds i don't think that's going to be his take so here's the here's the interesting thing when when hollywood did the movie the big short yeah michael lewis is the other guy who writes that yeah, story really I, well I, I was i actually was cheering on the guy who bet against the markets in 2008 there's nothing wrong with betting against something that you go this is bogus there's nothing wrong with that but you should take and swallow the bitter pill if you lose. Yes. If you win, great. But if you lose, you shouldn't be able to run to mommy and say, oh, mommy, they're ganging up on me. <laughs> well, it's just because you're special. That's why. This is wrong when the government interferes and, and starts to make rules. Oh, so you know what? It'd be as wrong as if we all knew how to vote, and then in the uh, in the middle of the game, they decide <laughs> to change all the rules. It's got to stop. 